Hey guys, this is Chris Kermis, and in this video I'm going to take you on the road across Iraqi Kurdistan and right up to the Iranian border. It was the former front line of the Iran-Iraq war, and not exactly the safest place for an Englishman to go without an approved visa and a tour guide in Iran. We'll stop off at some interesting sites along the way, including the former Silk Road town of Khoya, and Iraqi Kurdistan's vibrant second city of Suleimani. There'll be some tough stories from Iraq and Kurdistan's dark and bloody past, contrasted against day-to-day -day life in today's Kurdistan. Come with me on a journey to Iran. On our way to the Iranian border, we'll be stopping off first at Khoya town. Khoya was located on the Silk Road and has a vibrant bazaar containing the ruins of an ancient caravanserai which was still in use right up until 1997. The caravanserai was basically a stopping point along the Silk Road. It gave the merchants space where they could rest, where they could sleep, but also they could set up shop to sell and trade their goods. The open space in the middle, this is where the animals were. And the bottom, uh, the bottom floor here, this is where the shops were. Active shops for, well, the business people that were in the caravans. And up on the top floor here, the sleeping, the hotel rooms basically. These caravanserais, they're mostly a thing of the past but it's a lovely part of the history of the Silk Road. Wow. Now, of course, I'm gonna spare you the countless hours that we spent driving this day, but let's head on to Suleimani, Kurdistan's more modern second city and its capital of culture. <laughs> We can suddenly hear yeah, it. We have uh, all the tea house. We will go there later. Uh, it's over there called Tahani Shah. Okay, so this is the main square of uh, Suleimani. Let's head off now to look at the Red Prison before we come back to Suleimani's Bazaar later. It's going to be a tough but necessary side in the city. It was a prison back in Saddam Hussein's regime. It's basically operational from 1988 until uh, 1991, I believe. And it wasn't just a prison. It was also the center of operations of Saddam's security in uh, Suleimani. So this is now a museum and should tell the story of not just uh, Saddam Hussein and the genocide and the Iran-Iraq war, but also moving on to the ISIS times. There's several different buildings here and each one is gonna tell a different story. They say the Red Prison is called the Red Prison because of the blood, the amount of people who were tortured and killed here, but also, also the blood spilt and the liberation when this was taken back from Saddam's regime. This was always going to be a challenging place to visit, a horrible story to see and a horrible story to tell. But it's necessary to understand Iraq's history. I'm glad I've come here. It's not been an easy morning. I'll be glad to lighten it up now. We're going to head on to the market, see modern day rather than history, see the life of the country now in this thriving city.
Do you see this building? Yeah. This was the first hotel that built in Sleimani. So this former hotel was actually inspired by a caravanserai, like the ruins we saw earlier in Koya. It was only inspired by, as the city of Suleimani was never on the Silk Road, but this is basically how they used to look. It's really interesting to see from this historical perspective what a caravanserai would have looked like if they still existed nowadays. Now we step into the jewellery quarter of the market. So this is the oldest tea house in Suleimani, built in 1950. You can definitely see from up here why this is Kurdistan's second largest city. And it's a great city, it's a really interesting city, it's a vibrant city. They call it the Kurdistan city of culture and a very different a very different attitude here certainly i'd love to spend more time here spend a few days here that'd be fantastic but uh, sadly time's too short this time but uh, at least i've had the chance to explore it we'll head on now to the city of halabja on our way to iran a city with a sad and brutal past from the atrocity that happened there during the war i'm here in halabja at the halabja monument this is a monument to the terrible things that have happened in this town in the past this is seen some of the worst history in the Iran-Iraq war. What happened here? Basically, this town was right at the forefront of the war. It's very, very near the Iranian border, and it changed hands through fighting between Iran and Iraq many times. The Peshmerga forces, the Kurdistan freedom fighters at the time, they were basically working alongside Iran as they had a joint enemy, Saddam Hussein's Iraqi army. Peshmerga and the Iranian forces, they took this town, and Saddam Hussein was not very happy about it. He basically committed chemical warfare within his own country. He bombed this place with over 400 bombs, killing so many people here. I think the first example of chemical warfare being used within a country against effectively its own people, although of course the Kurds were not seen by Saddam Hussein as uh, his people. So. The Iranians had actually left by this point. It was purely the Peshmerga and the Kurdistan people who suffered this. But it was an act of revenge by Saddam Hussein. And an act of revenge which was so destructive and will always be remembered here. This was an actual truck containing 40 people during the attack that was used to try and escape. The vast majority of those people died, of course. This has been a very challenging sight to see. It's not easy to see such horrors that human beings can inflict on each other. Warfare is a truly terrible thing, and the atrocities committed by Saddam Hussein on the Kurds is just unbelievable that this happened in history. So, to see and hear these stories is hard, to tell these stories is hard. It's not a story that I want to tell about Iraq, I really want to focus on the positive, that this is the history of Iraq. But history is important, history helps to explain why a place is like it is today. So, yes, I will tell this story. But I'll move forward with the positive, I'll continue with the positive because Iraq is not that country anymore. Iraq has changed, it's moving forward. Kurdistan is a vibrant and uh, quite wealthy region doing quite well for itself now. The rest of Iraq is, as I understand it, pretty safe now. Kurdistan has been safe for quite a few years. Things are definitely changing, things are improving. And uh, let's, let's absolutely try and focus on the positives. That is Iran. 
So this is right by the border of Iran and Iraq. The mountains behind me you'll see are Iran. And uh, down below is the town of Zam. Now, as I understand it, the Iranian border is not exactly very well marked. And uh, you could accidentally just walk across it. And uh, I heard a story of basically some Americans who used to live here in Iraq. They were down here. They took a walk up into the mountains, just, uh, just a bit of hiking up there. They went about two kilometers in and they got caught by the Iranian army. Really, really unlucky. But just for this, just for this, they ended up in prison for two and a half years in an Iranian prison. And that's not the worst of it. This area used to be the front line. And basically, there's still landmines everywhere, uncleared. So it actually seems unlucky ending up in jail, but they could have ended up exploded stepping on a landmine. Zam town, although it's uh, basically right by the Iranian border and uh, right on the front line of the Iran-Iraq war, didn't really have so much to play in the war because basically when the war was coming, people ran, people left. So the town was almost deserted as I understand it for quite some time. And within the, the time of the war, it got taken by both sides, back and forth, back and forth. So this is the pathway that heads up from Zam town. We've just come from the waterfall. This is actually the pathway that the Americans went up when they were hiking up here. It's about two kilometers from the Iranian border here. So where I am is completely safe from anything like that happening. It's also just a normal pathway, so no mines up here. But it's gone to dirt path now. Certainly not quite such nice views, but yeah, this is where it happened. I'm here in the town of Biara. This is the closest Kurdish town to the border with Iran, basically. So about 500 meters up the road here is Iran. It's supposedly the case that some people, they can be Kurdish citizens, but they can actually have property in Iran. That's how this, this town is kind of spread out. And there's farms basically spread between the two countries. The border's so close here. So we're going to take a little look around here. Obviously not going to cross uh, the Iranian border. That would be very dangerous for me. But uh, we're certainly going to have a look around here and uh, see what it's like on this border town. So here ends our story right on the Iraq-Iran border. It's been a very tough story to hear, it's been a tough story to tell, it's been a tough story to record. And I'd like to move on now to more positives, what Iraq and what particularly Kurdistan has become. The huge positives of the country nowadays, the wealth that's here, the, the relaxed, uh, relaxed people and sensibilities here. It's truly a wonderful place. The next videos will be a lot more positive, so please join me on them as we explore more of Iraq and Kurdistan. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. There'll be plenty more coming from my series on Iraqi Kurdistan and beyond, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you think in the comments below, but please let's keep any politics out of it, there's other places for that. The purpose of this channel is simply to show the wonders of some of the world's often misunderstood places. Goodbye for now, and I hope you can join me on the road again.